Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. I'm bringing you back in. Hey, everybody. We are ready to rumble. Education Thursday, live, let's do it. So this week, there is a lot going on. A lot going on, a lot going on. There are a few schools starting to come back, out of virtual into the uh, hybrid or live. Uh, SATs are cranking again. ACTs are cranking again. Uh, school is kind of, sort of, maybe a little bit coming back to normal. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But really, tonight's about my special guest, who I'm super psyched to have on. I'm going to introduce in a second. I just want to talk about two things very quickly. Um, as I mentioned, schools are, are, you know, we've been in school six, eight weeks now. And it's either, I'm talking to parents every day. Some are all excited. Some are complaining. Uh, and I think where it's at now is kind of stabilized. And I'm not saying that necessarily in a good or bad way. Just as in reality, I think you're getting what you're going to be getting. So as always, this show is, is sponsored by the support community. If you need help, littlest, tiniest question possible, enormous question, uh, reach out because I, I have lots of means to help you. Very simple, meet you at your level, and uh, we will roll from there. The support community is makethegrade.community. Yeah. Second thing uh, for now is that we are continuing these lives every week got guests lined up into January. January, can you believe it? Yeah. Uh, it was a couple weeks. Thanksgiving, we're not doing it Christmas week, but I got already guests into there. This is covering a huge spectrum uh, of all different things that are here to help parents, help students to maximize their educational experience. Some of the directly academic, some of them like tonight are a little bit tangential, but super valuable. So without any further ado, I want to bring my guest tonight. I'm really excited to have her on. Carly Miles, welcome. Hi, thanks for having you me. There? I Hang am on, I'm here. not hearing you, Carly. There you go. Say something. How about now? Nah, yes, yes, yes. Maybe on my end. I don't know. I get all when these first come on live, I get all excited. By the way, if you're watching at home or wherever in your car, on your tablet, whatever you're doing, and you want to comment, ask me a question, ask Carly a question, just write a comment. We'll see it here. Like, for example, hello, Ron. Welcome. Ron, one of my sponsors in uh, the month of September. Check out his thing at Education by Entertainment. But well, you can be, you have your 15 minutes of fame right here. Anyway, let me just uh, do a quick little bio on Carly, and I'm going to let her take it away. But Carly Myers has a uh, business called Stressless, stressless.com. And her basic goal, she is an expert at helping female leaders executives, business owners, managers, and, and in my case, I think parents who are feeling overloaded, overworked and exhausted, find peace, find some freedom, and that they desire. She's the founder of a company called The Stress Less Company. I love that name, Stress Less. Uh, and she's helps hundreds of professionals around the world take action, reduce stress. So very, very impressive uh, resume and pedigree there. And uh, so uh, how are you? How are you doing? this beautiful Thursday night. I'm doing great. It's my Friday night. I'm going to be taking off tomorrow, oh. getting a little nature time in. So Good for you, TGIT. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Are you going hiking or something? A, a fresh air kind I, of thing? Yep. I'm going up to New Hampshire for a oh. little time surrounded by lots of trees and a camp uh, in a tent. So Good. Well, I, the, I, I, that actually sounds really nice to me. I would bring a heavy duty coat. <laughs> it's probably a little chilly <laughs> up there. But hey, yeah. look, there's something to be said for reconnecting, right? You know, to the basics, getting back to the land, set your soul free, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Good for you. Good for you. And I, I know it's well deserved. Uh, but before we, you leave, <laughs> let's talk about what you do. So can you just encapsulate maybe your mission statement or your goal, or what your core a service would be for the parents and, and everybody out there who's listening right now. What do you basically offer? Yeah. So what we really focus on is we help leaders 
who are feeling overworked and exhausted, uh, who are, you know, first of all, let me define leaders here in this scenario. We typically work with uh, executives, we work with um, managers, we work with business owners, people who have got a lot of stuff going on, including those professionals who have got kids and um, they're feeling overworked and exhausted. And we really help them find the peace and the freedom that they desire. And as a result of our work together, what they learn is not only how to deepen their spiritual connection, and we might talk about how, what that has to do with stress later this mm -hmm. evening, but they also learn those tactical tools so that they can experience more free time, more efficiency, and even more prosperity. And I see Ronald says hello. So nice to see you too. Is, um, you know, look, it, we live in a world where everybody wants a quick fix, right? Mm -hmm. Get a headache, you take an aspirin or whatever. You, you, you get a, I don't know, whatever. You work out, you're a little bit sore, you put some cream on it. Um, is that, is that, is is there does that blend with with what you can do? Is this more deep rooted? Um, you know, I, it, it, I don't think this is something somebody can come to you and in five minutes all of a sudden, you know, have, have some panacea that fixes everything. But take us through the process a little bit. So somebody presents to you and they're saying, "I'm stressed. I, I'm just uh, the world. The weight of the world's on my shoulders." And and, and where do you, where do you go from there? Yeah, so it really, you know, it depends on the individual, but I would say that the if we are in fight, flight, or freeze, where we are just freaking out, we we feel like we're in a corner, we don't know how to handle the situation, right? Like we're in that space. The first thing that I would recommend is that we implement some creative stress reduction. And creative stress reduction, for those of you who don't know what it is, is a term that I've coined that means any activity, it is any activity that gets us out of fight, flight, or freeze mode and gets us into this state of play or flow, um, aka rest and digest. And so this activity can be anything. So it can be going on a walk, playing with your dog, painting. It could be baking a pie. It really could be formatting an Excel spreadsheet. It really doesn't so matter it doesn't what it is. It doesn't be sitting on top of a mountain in a lotus position, you know, <laughs> saying a mantra for whatever. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And the point of this being that when we're in fight, flight, or freeze mode, we have a tendency to make pretty poor decisions. So we act rashly. We make poor decisions. And so the first step, if we're in that state of mind, is to do a little bit of creative stress reduction so that we can get our ourselves out of that mode so that we can start thinking clearer and we can think more strategically. Hmm. Now, Beyond that, I actually have a seven-step system, unique methodology called the Stress Less Method that I bring my clients through when they are, if they're experiencing stress. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're experiencing stress every single moment of every single day, mm -hmm. but it could also mean we're experiencing stress in every single moment and every single day. We're feeling overworked, overwhelmed, exhausted. We're maybe even feeling burnt out. And so we go through that seven step methodology where we're ending on the other side of that. We're finding true emotional freedom, which is beautiful. There's so many levels we could get into this one. Let, let me start here. Uh, Cause a lot of my audience typically are parents. Uh, they have kids in school, which in and of itself by definition carries some level of stress, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the kid's not doing what they're supposed to do. They're arguing with about homework. They got a bad grade. It's always somebody else's fault. Blah, 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 blah. But is there some, is there some, anything in particular, uh, and your advice is sound. Is there anything in particular you might be able to tell parents that maybe is a little bit unique in their own situation as opposed to say a business executive, mm -hmm. uh, or, or a, a person in, a, in a, a corporate leadership type position? Yeah. Because there's so many well, so, layers as a parent. You know, you, you can argue about school, of course, but then you have to clean your room. You know, you, you eat your lima beans. Uh, you know, but so yeah, there's a lot of baggage sometimes that comes with this stuff. But you know, is there yeah. something you could just right off the bat say to parents that might some sagacious advice here? Yes. So it's funny. I thought that I had patience until my sister had twins and I decided to take care of them for a week. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thought I had patience. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> no. Yes. Um, so. I just give you, although, here you go. Taking care of you your know. sister's twins for a week. That's, that's <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, you'd get one to sleep and then the, and the next oh, one would yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> wake the other one up. But, you know, I would say that there is so much as parents that is outside of our control, right? And there's so much, and I think this is in general, but I think most, you know, really specifically with parents, you can't always predict how your your teenager or your kid is going to react. You don't know what's going to, you know, send them down a spiral. You don't know what's going to stress them out. You don't know... Um, even how like there's so much when it comes to having another person in your life, you, there's not, there's a level of unpredictability. Mm -hmm. And so relating this back to the stress less method, you know, the first thing that I would recommend to parents who feel like their life is out, out of their, out of control, like whether it's the, the way the kids are, the, whether their kids are struggling right now and they're, uh, you know, acting out or shutting down or whether they're just like, what is going on with, e-learning, what's going on with going back to school. Somebody make up their freaking mind already, right? Like there's so much that's <laughs> outside of, of our control. So that I would start with step one in my methodology, which is to deepen our spiritual understanding. Mm. Now, this kind may... Kind of go inside, so to speak. Yeah. And so like when I say the word spirituality, what I really mean is the undefined thing that gets us from a place of struggle and suffering to that beautiful state of mind, that peace, that freedom, mm. ease, whatever. And so deepening our spiritual understanding is about under starting to create a definition or an understanding of what spirituality means to us as individuals. And the reason that this is so important is because, like I was saying earlier, there's so many things that are completely outside of our control. And a lot of us, we have the tendency to, when, we, when we're experiencing those things that are outside of our control, we have that fight, flight, or freeze response. We start to freak out. Things can't be this way. And then we try to control the uncontrollable, which leads to even more stress. Hmm. And so, so we have the stuff that's outside of our control. And then we also have the stuff that's inside, you know, within our control that we can actually do something about. But oftentimes when we get in such a stressed state, we end up neglecting the things that we actually have control over to worry and focus on the things that we can never change. And so this first step is incredibly important, especially to parents, because there is so much that is outside of our control right now. Mm -hmm. And we need to have the ability to start to hand off those things so that we can shift our energy from something that we can't change to focus on the things that we can and start making those changes. You know, I just did, this is kind of going off on a, a little bit of a tangent here, but I just did a Facebook live training last earlier this week on Monday about this same concept and how it applied to the elections. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to go into who's, you know, who to vote for and all that. We don't have enough stuff, time but... for that. <laughs> At least not tonight. But, right but it's really this it's very similar because we don't know what this person's going to do if they get elected or if they get reelected blah 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 but mm -hmm. we get so worried about the big picture that we fail to to realize that the stuff that is within our control like researching and like doing our research on who to vote for like perhaps we could be a poll worker like perhaps we could be really reaching out to our local officials or you know whatever those things are but we get so caught up in the things that are outside of our control that we don't even think about what we could really change. So here's the question. Here's the question for you. And, I, and then I want to get into your personal story because it's super compelling. Sure. If you're okay with that. Is mm -hmm. it the stress itself as a stimulus or is it how we cope with the stress or is it both? I know it's complete. It's, I don't know if it's possible to completely separate because it would, it's yeah. impossible to live in a stressless world. I mean, it's just if you're alive, you have some level of stress, right? Yeah. Everybody has you know, that stress. They, they, they had to find the next bison or next woolly <laughs> mammoth, right? So yep. it, there's never going to be zero stress. That That's not reality. And when people have zero stress, are people underground? I mean, 
Rest yeah, I peace. mean, there's a reason my company is called the less stre- the stress right. less. It's not zero. Company. It's not stress none. <laughs> yeah, it's not stress not none. Stress, free, stress right? Le- yeah. right, right. So we 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 understand that. That but so is it the stress ors the stimuli, at, or is it how individuals cope with it, or is it the combination? Which, yeah, what's your would, view on that? I would say it's not so black and white, but it is very much so there is, I, I can definitely argue for the fact or for the, the viewpoint in which it is the way in which we respond, we respond to the stressor because at each, every single one of us watching this training tonight, watching this live tonight could experience the same exact stressor and mm-hmm. have a completely different response. And, you know, something might happen and, you know, uh, I would be like, okay, whatever, no big deal. And, you know, Ron, who's joining us right now, maybe maybe it's a big deal to him and it sends him in a spiral. So it depends on the person. It depends on our background. It depends on a lot of other things. But it, it really, what I would say is it boils down to how we view the, the stressor, which is, is it considered distress or is it for us considered eustress? Yes, so, e- EU stress. EU stress, like euphoric stress, right? So typically, U stress is associated with, you know, things that are stressful, but are good. So we would think things like getting married, having kids, getting the promotion, getting that, you know, going to college, you know, all of these things. Hosting a Thursday Night Live. <laughs> right? All these good things. Yeah. Right? Being a guest, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of pressure yeah. on you to give a lot of brilliance here. So well, you're handling it very well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But you know, all of these things we typically view as good, mm-hmm. very easy, right? Having a baby is stressful. Getting a promotion, stressful, getting married, stressful, going to college, stressful, but we're so excited about it for most of us. We're mm-hmm. so excited about it that we're, we don't even care. It doesn't even matter. And so it's really what I want to talk about tonight is this shift. It's not, it doesn't have to just be the good stuff. It can also be the, you know, the other things that are going on in our life. If there's a tough situation, do you view it as a grow growth opportunity or do you view it as something that's going to put you in harm's way? That's going to screw, screw, screw you over basically. Speaking of growth opportunity, can, can we talk about your story? Because I, yeah. I, I know what it is, at least most of it or some of it, and it's it's really compelling, but it's also very personal. Um, and and there's I know a little bit of the reason why you're doing what you're doing, so I'm, I'm going to ask you to share that um, because it's it's a it's a, um, a really powerful journey, right? Yeah. And um, I think the what I've taken from it, and I've heard this before is everything is a process right we're we're here then we're here then we're here and it's it's not it's not a quantum change you you kind of grind through it and you 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 change you know it's it's, everything's kind of a gradual then you can look back and see a big change which actually is a lot with what i see academically with kids you know nobody goes from an f to an a there's there's a build-up so let, let let's Let's go back, you know, I guess to, to, you know, where everything started for you in terms of the stress coping. And, you know, if you want to share your, your story here, I, I think it would be, uh, you know, interesting. So let's talk about this. So how, how you know, this is kind of how you got into the stress less world, right? So let, let's, let's, let's hear it. Yeah. So this is definitely a, a very personal story, but it is the reason that I do the work that I do today. And When I was about 12 years old, um, actually a man was murdered in my home and my mom was shot three times. And, um, you know, my, around that time in my life, things weren't working out between my parents. And so they separated and my mom started dating again and she ended up dating a bad apple. And we realized it a little bit into their relationship. And so she broke it off. And then she moved on, right? As we do when we go through breakups, separations, divorces, she started dating again. And the problem was, is that that ex-boyfriend never stopped paying attention. And a few weeks later, he ended up breaking into my childhood home, killing my mom's new boyfriend and trying to kill my mom. 
And my mom, I mean, this guy literally shot my mom point blank in the back of her head through her L5, um, you know, in her spine and through her arm. I mean, she was not supposed to survive. The doctor said she had a 3% chance of living. Hmm. And if you, you know, basically she ended up making a full recovery. If you saw her today, you would have absolutely no idea. You know, all she has is a pair of reading glasses and a slight limp. That's it. But while my mom basically made a full recovery, I really struggled for a long time. You know, I struggled with the symptoms of PTSD, with stress, with overwhelm, with jumpiness, with night terrors. I mean, you name it, I was probably struggling with it. And it took me a really long time, first of all, to get the courage to tell anybody that I was struggling. And when I finally did, I would say things to people like, hey, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of struggling right now or I'm, I'm feeling a little stressed or I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed. And I would ask people for advice. And it was like clockwork. I got the same, you know, five or so responses every single time. Hey, Carly, have you tried therapy? Have you tried meditation, yoga, exercise? Have you changed your diet? You know, and for me, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, who do you think I am? Do you think I live under a rock? Like, what? <laughs> come on, give me a break. And the reality was, is I was so desperate for change that I had tried all of that. You know, and I have to be honest with your listeners, Steve, that, you know, some of the stuff, it didn't work at all. And some of it worked a little bit, but nothing ever got me over that hump where I was experiencing things like, you know, happiness and joy and silliness and goofiness and, and even just a, a sense of contentment, those beautiful states of mind. And as a result of continually showing up and doing things that I knew weren't working for me, I ended up struggling for 10 years, 10 years. Hmm. until I finally found the thing that worked for me. And by the way, that thing that got me out of all of this was creative stress reduction. That was the first step in my journey. We already talked about that a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. And then I have to be, I have to be honest again that, you know, I spent a few years being a little, a little angry. Cause I was like, why isn't anybody talking about this? What, like really we're, we've got these five or so mainstream approaches that we're recommending to everybody. Like it's a magic, like they're magic pills. And I realized that there's no one size fits all. There never was. And when I got done, you know, throwing my temper tantrum, I had this kind of aha where I was like, oh, ah, oh, crap. Like I'm supposed to be the one that's talking about this. And so, you know, that's where the Stress Less Company was born. You know, helping people mm. see that if you feel like you've tried everything, you probably haven't. And I do want to just take a moment, Steve, tonight and just share if, if there are any teenagers listening that are struggling. To know that even if you reach out, you know, first of all, reach out if you need help. If you're struggling with something, reach out. I mean, you're not talking stress. You're talking like and stress. I'm, I'm talking right? stress. I'm talking trauma. Right. I'm talking anything that you're going through. Mm -hmm. Reach out. Don't don't hold it in like I did for five to seven years. Don't do it. Mm. And if you don't get the response that you're looking for, reach out again, and reach out again, and reach out now, again. Now, I don't want in any way, any way, shape, or form. Um, diminish your experience because that's you yeah. know, a heavy duty. Um, but it is someone who has like more like a day to day, you know, like oh, I got a test next week and I got three tests in yep. the paper, you know, I'm stressed out about that. They're using the same word. They may not be using it in the exact same context, but, mm -hmm. but um, I, I know you're not going to be able to talk about your entire program in, in the next 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but what would be the, a simple exercise? Yeah, and there's a lot of classic things, you know, t to take deep breaths, count to 10. But is there just some kind of simple um, exercise, I'm going to use that word, that you could share with people um, t just to kind of put the brakes on it a little bit, you know, like maybe, oh, you know, or something like that? Is there is there like a first thing that you, you might suggest doing? I know it's not going to cure Maybe cure is even the wrong word to use, right? You probably didn't use cure in this thing. It's cope. But um, 
you know, what, what's kind of a, just a quick thing people could do? So I would definitely return to, to creative stress reduction. And what you would do in order to find what works for you is you would start by making a list of at least 50 to 100 activities that you love doing mm. and then kind of narrowing it down from there. You know, what is, you know, let's make sure it's not harmful to my, to ourselves or to others. Let's make sure it, it if we are, if we've experienced trauma that it doesn't trigger us. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's make sure that it fits into our time and our financial resources. And let's also make sure that if we did it every single time, we would be, if every single so time we're stressed. Just that, taking a walk around the block. Yes, exactly. So when you're making that list, you're going to narrow it down to the things that are healthy and accessible for you. And that, you know, I've had clients where, you know, they're taking a, a test and they're getting nervous and their creative stress reduction is, you know, something that just brings them a sense of calm is rubbing their hands on their thighs, right? That gives them a sense of groundedness. It gives them a sense of calm. I've had other clients where it's, you know, drawing the infinity so symbol on their hand because that can be a really grounding activity. Hmm. Um, it can, you know, we've all heard about breath work. We've, you know, just focusing on our breath. One little tip that I would give around, you know, using the breath to manage stress is that your body actually creates a, creates hormones and releases different chemicals when you exhale longer than you inhale. So it's not about just taking deep breaths. In fact, that's probably going to get you more worked up. It's actually about making your exhale longer so that your brain is triggered to release those, those hormones and those chemicals that create that rest and digest response. Like so those are a few. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. So those are a few. But again, I always hesitate to give specific advice because each and every one of us are unique. So mm -hmm. always start with a list of activities that you love doing that make you feel good, narrow it down to the items that are healthy and accessible for you and take it from there. Start exploring. How, how do you feel about, um, you know, I, you know, I have a background in psychology and uh, one, th there's a school of therapy uh, and I, I'm blanking on the exact name, but it doesn't matter. You know, we're at some point the patient has to confront their demons Mm -hmm. Not using the clinical terms, um, you know, it's not it. Uh, what you're what you're talking about is is um, a, kind of a coping and adaptive sort of therapy. It's it, si yeah, not it, right? dealing with it. Is you, you're not really asking somebody to say, "Hey, you know, you got stressed out because of something, and let, we got to go hit that head on, so you don't have that stimulation anymore." Um, is that something that you think is important? Like, like I'm going to use an example. Yeah. I have kids they, they I can work with them, you know, virtually in an office, whatever. I know they know their material. I know they know the information. They go into a test, they, they get, uh, out of their, uh, whatever their comfort zone and they don't perform as well. Uh, they, you know, commonly called test anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. and there's a hundred, you know, things people say to get around that. Um, but it, that's just kind of a lower level thing. That's not going to you know, put in somebody into suicidal mode, hopefully at least. Um, it, it, you know, what, what's the simplest way to get somebody to self monitor this or is there one? Yeah. So what we've talked about so far is simply a tool to get out of fight, flight or freeze mode. And if you find yourself in a situation where you have to perform in the moment, that is a great, those are great tools to just get yourself back in the game as soon as possible. But when the real work, and this is the reason why clients work with me is that they want to figure out what's really deeply causing, not not just putting a Band-Aid on the problem, but preventing the stress, the unnecessary stress. Mm -hmm. And so an example like, you know, getting testing anxiety, there's likely, you know, the test is the stressor, live testing is the stressor. But that's quite frankly, in my work, I found it's never actually the real block the real thing that's causing the anxiety and causing the stress response. Mm. Um, you know, that's is exactly why, you know, step two in my, in my methodology is to identify the blocks, because if we don't know what's causing, for instance, that testing anxiety, we don't know what to do about it. And so we're stuck in the cycle of, you know, testing anxiety, 
creative stress reduction, anxiety, creative stress reduction, you know, and you're just, you know, anxiety meditation, you know, whatever. You're just in that cycle of constantly trying to soothe yourself instead of get to the root. So what I would recommend is, you know, we actually have at this at the stress less company a, a system that we take all of our clients through to figure out what's really at the root. But I'll give you an example just for the sake of of mm -hmm. this argument. So let's say we have a student who has high levels of test anxiety. They completely blank when they when they sit down. There are three questions in, a challenge comes up, they you know, that's when things go go awry. There's likely, you know, we start with identifying, okay, what why are they why are they feeling this way? Why am I feeling this way? There's probably a story that maybe it's I'm not smart enough. Maybe I didn't study hard enough. Of this always happens to me. I this I this is just my anxiety. Whatever the story is, mm -hmm. and then we go a step further and we say, okay, what's the feeling? Now in this case, it's pretty easy because we've you know the feeling was part of the scenario. We're feeling anxious. We might also feel like a sense of despair because we don't know how we're going to remember all the answers for this test. And then we take it a step further and we ask ourselves, and this is the this is a really important question. What which of my basic needs are being threatened here? So if we think about Maslow's hierarchy of right needs. Maslow's, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, we have physiological food, water, shelter, clean air, that kind of stuff. You know, then we have safety needs, then we have love and belonging, then we have um, uh, self-esteem. And at the yeah, very top, we have right. self-actualization, exactly. Mm -hmm. We ask ourselves, which of these needs are being threatened? Not, not necessarily not being met, but being threatened by this. And so if we have, for instance, a student that has parents that don't accept anything less than a B, that could be a basic love and belonging need that's being threatened by this test. It could also be, depending on the severity of their home life, it could be a, 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 a shelter thing, right? I'm going to have to avoid my house for the rest of this week because I don't want to have this conversation. And so if we identify the basic needs that are being threatened for this student, we realize it really has nothing to do with the test and forgetting the answer. And it has everything to do with what the parent thinks or what the student is assuming, the story that they're telling they're assuming is going to happen if they quote unquote fail or don't get that a and it may it, it may not ever happen but because they believe it could happen it's enough of a trigger to start the whole cycle yes and right. and believe it or not we're not even the whole way at the the root here we're mm -hmm. only you know, three quarters down. Yeah, so we got, we, we got a very big onion here. <laughs> we, we haven't gotta... really peeled it back. Mm -hmm. Carly, listen, uh, I find this really, really interesting. And, and I know uh, it's a very individual thing, right? I mean, people could yeah. be listening to this and saying, I, I, I get it. I get it. I just don't know what to do. Or I get it. Now I know what to do. Um, this is Steve Green, my guest, Carly Myers, Education Live Thursday. We're here every single week talking education, but really talking about ways parents, students, people – can help themselves in the classroom, out of the classroom, uh, maximize your education. That's my thing. But I love having experts on that can just bring so much value with this. Um, I mean, I'm not even joking. We could talk about this for weeks, <laughs> um, but we only have about 10 more minutes. Um, is, is there anything you're doing, like anything you want to plug? Like do you have an event or, a, a, I don't know, a workshop or anything that you may be able to offer uh, anybody in the community here? Absolutely. So I, I will start by saying if you're a parent and you feel like you could use some support, you feel you're feeling overworked, you're feeling overextended, what I'd love to do is offer you an invitation to chat one on one with me. And so, you know, what will happen there is we'll sit down on for a phone call and we'll look at, you know, what's causing you to feel overworked, what's causing the exhaustion, what's causing the stress. Mm -hmm. And I will listen deeply. And I will hold space for you. And then together, we will get to the root of why you haven't found that peace and that freedom yet. And yet is the key word here. And so in order to uh, grab that opportunity, what you're going to do is you're going to visit stresslessco.com apply. 
and you're going to fill out that application. Make sure you mention Dr. Stephen Green in that application where you came from. Make the grade. And a member of my team will be in touch with you within the next 48 business hours should it be a good fit for us to talk, for, for me to be able to support you. So that's definitely one place where you could go. I also run a self-care in action group. It's a self-care accountability group that is completely free that meets bi-weekly on Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And mm -hmm. so if you're interested in checking that out, you're like, you know what? I need to start taking care of myself. I need to implement the creative stress reduction that we were talking about earlier. Then you're going to visit stresslessco.com slash self-care. And all you need to do is enter your name and email and you'll get the reminders and the links and everything for that. Um, let me ask you this, because I've asked a lot of my recent guests this. We're in a, we're in a, a stressful time. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to heavily debate that. Uh, I'm not sure when it's going to end. I don't know what the normal is going to be, whenever that is. Um, it, it, I, I'm trying to stay positive. So is, is there anything positive you think will long-term come out of this? What I usually, like if somebody asks me that question, I say, I think the acceptance of virtual education is way, way up. Th th I've been doing virtual teaching for well, 10 years now. And in, it, it, sometimes you have to convince people, hey, you can learn this way. Trust me, you really can. Um, and I think people know that experience. It's not perfect, and it's not perfect for everyone. But generally when done properly and done uh, with conviction, it, it can, people can definitely learn. Um, and I, I, you know, I look at that as a positive because it opens up education to a lot more people. That's mm -hmm. the positive to me. But is there anything in your world, you know, in, in your profession or personally maybe that you know, you feel is, is going to be a positive um, kind of coming out of the negative, as it were? Yeah. So I had a friend back in, I think it was March or April. Uh, we were on a Zoom call and she shared, you know, it's really funny. I feel like the world is in a force, like a global forced like yoga or meditation retreat. <laughs> and like <laughs> not all of us want to be here, but we are. <laughs> yeah, and we're really. being forced to reflect, right? And so I was thinking I thought, more like a boot camp, but <laughs> 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 yeah, like, like yeah. basic training. <laughs> <laughs> but I I really loved that example because what I've seen over the last eight months, and I cannot believe it's been eight months, but here we are. It is that we have been forced, many of us, not, I wouldn't say all of us, but many of us have been forced to see that something hasn't been quite right. It has nothing to do with the pandemic, but we've slowed down enough to say something's not right. I'm not feeling quite right. I'm feeling stressed more so than maybe normal. Or you're examining their priorities. And yeah, they're saying, wait a second, why was I wasting so much time doing X, Y, and Z, right? Right, right. And it's been an opportunity, and I'm seeing it already, an opportunity to heal past wounds, to address chronic stress, to spend more time with family, to have more fun, to get out and, you know, like just really reprioritize happiness. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, a, that's going to be a huge takeaway from this whole experience. I, I That I completely agree with you about the um, uh, kind of the reshuffling of what's really, really important. And, and it's not completely wiping things out that everybody always thought were important, but um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I was talking to somebody, uh, a teacher, a friend of mine, when this all hit in March, middle March, everybody's ah, a couple weeks, a month, maybe spring breaks coming up. It'll all be normal by April 15th. I don't think anybody, uh, medical, non-medical, whatever thought this was going to be a seven, eight, nine month, 12 month, who knows, um, thing. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting. The um, th last question for you, um, your, your business, who would you say you were, um, is, is, can you share a success story? Is there a case study or uh, sort of a, a testimonial you want to share of somebody you worked with who maybe the audience can relate to uh, particularly and you took them from point A to point B, you know, through your work? Yeah, so I have two um two examples that are really coming to mind. Uh, one of which uh, I think relates more so. So we'll start there. So I had a client a few years ago who was a professor and uh, leader at a local university, big deal university. Mm -hmm. 
And she managed, not only managed a big team, she was research, she had to do research for the university, and she was working with hundreds of students. And she had, you know, she had a high stress job. And in addition to that, she had family. And so she was, she was constantly, there was always a reason for her to be stressed. And she was, for the most part. Mm -hmm. To the point where she would get so overwhelmed by the to-do list, so overwhelmed by her responsibilities that she would become basically the world's most indecisive leader, <laughs> indecisive and exhaustive <laughs> leader, right? And so she would end up in in meetings and and situations where she just she couldn't prioritize. She couldn't say what was what needed to be done first, what needed to be handed off. The thought of grading paper, hundreds of papers, just made her brain want to explode, and for her, that all of that work stress ended up coming home. And it was when one thing went wrong, she was snapping at her loved ones. Had nothing to do with them. Yes, they could have, they probably were being a little bit annoying, but right, it was it was this just the straw that broke the camel's back. Classic and projection. In, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in in our work together, you know, she worked through this seven step methodology. She realized that. One, she needed to implement creative stress reduction to get out of indecisive mode so that she didn't exhaust herself. And when she did, then we moved into the seven step methodology. And then she was able to say, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You're going to do this. I'm going to focus on this. These are my priorities. She was able to move through her day with ease and grace. And then she was able to come home and be truly present for her family. There was no projection. There was no outlash of discomfort feeling from the day before or the the previous day it was just ease it was just connection their hard stuff came up but she was able to shift in the moment and rise mm. to the occasion wow now how, now how did is that a, a month six months a year is there i know i know it's hard to put a clock on it but this probably took a little bit of time right yeah so um for her, it was in the six to 12 month range. There was a lot of shifting that needed to happen. There mm -hmm. was a lot of uh, blocks that needed to be identified so that she could change her actions. Um, but yeah, so all of my clients work with me for a minimum of 12 months because it's not just one little one thing that's causing all of our stress as much as we all wish it was that way. That if we just handled this one thing, if we made more money, if we got better grades, if we whatever, right, right. there's so much more. And so it was really over that six to 12 month time frame that those big shifts started to happen for her. Hmm, powerful. All right. I know you said you got two. You got one really fast because we're coming up <laughs> against our deadline here. Yeah. So the other one, you know, the other ones I'll just share really quickly. It's a little bit more extreme. But I had a, a client come to me about a year ago who had, you know, she had tried everything by normal standards. She had been to therapy. She had been to a psychiatrist. She was taking medications. She was learning about meditation. She was uh, trying to exercise. I mean, she was trying, she had tried everything. And in the past, she had been, um, she had found herself in the hospital for different suicidal thoughts and things like that. Mm. I mean, this is a more extreme example. And she came to me as a last, last ditch effort. Like I can't get that. I need something. Something needs to change. I'm struggling. And the doctors aren't helping anymore. The therapists aren't helping anymore. They're on my team. I'm not letting go of them, but they're not working. And within just six months of working together, the f I have to tell you, the first step was the most powerful for her. Mm because she realized that her relationships were causing so much stress in her life. She was trying to control the uncontrollable, AKA other people. And when she realized she was able to hand this off to a higher power, whatever that meant for her, mm -hmm. and she was able to identify what was causing that urge within her in addition to all of the other blocks, she was able to not only, um, be, there's so much change in her. I'm like, which example do I, I share? Well, let me share that she was in a toxic relationship before she left the toxic relationship. She's in a healthy relationship. Now she was able to get a $15,000 bonus, uh, not bonus pay, pay grade, um, raise mm -hmm. every year. In addition to another, I think five to 10 grand bonus. And 
she's been able to, she's been stable on her medications. She's been, her therapist was even shocked at the progress that she's been making. And she said to me for the first time uh, a few months ago, she said, I don't know where I would be without this work. I actually, for the first time in my life in a long time, actually feel content. Hmm. And I think that is the power of the work that I do of getting, uh, that's the power of really getting to the root of the stress and not just putting a bandaid on it. Right. Which is the key. And look, and it's obvious and I really appreciate you sharing this so uh, candidly, you know, how invested you are in your people, you know, uh, emotionally and, and all that. So I thank you for that. Oh, okay. Carly Myers, D-A-I-S. What does that stand for? Diplomat darn, of the American Darn Institute. something, uh, <laughs> intelligent person. Uh, what, DA, what's his stand uh, for? Sorry. A diplomat of the American Institute of Stress. Oh, look at you. American Institute yeah. of Stress. <laughs> you, good stress. Good stress. Good stress. Steve Green with Carly Myers, stresslesscode.com. This is Education Live Thursday. Every Thursday night, I'm trying to bring you people, experts, anybody who can help parents, kids, adults, children, doesn't matter, manage your academics, whether it's the stress, whether it's the academics, all the different things we have to deal with. Uh, you know what? I got to be honest. I forget who the guest is next week. So let me kind of cheat and look that up. Let's oh, so find me. Okay, roll. next. Yeah, no, I, I got so into I got so into your story. I got to be really honest. I was really drawn in. It was super powerful. Uh, next week, Samantha Feynman, um, an expert in executive functioning. Uh, one of the guest speakers on the Back to School workshop, which was, uh, at least based on the feedback, really great. And I appreciate everybody's feedback. But Samantha has a lot to bring to the table as well. Um, Carly has really shared a lot of stuff. I'd suggest get with her, take the upper offer, on, take her up on her offer. I'd have a conversation. I may too. I'm kind of getting a little clamped here. What is not the word? Is? So, uh, but anyway, I, I think if we can summarize this. Um, I'm going to go on a little bit and say it, it's, a, it's an individual person's responsibility to take responsibility for their, their health, right? You know, I, I had um, Hallie Steinberg on uh, recently, and, you know, it's the same thing. We're talking about diet, um, not, not like not diet like you can't ever eat a candy bar, but it's about a responsibility. It's just acknowledging that you need to take responsibility for your own self-care um, yeah. within moderation and reason and things that you can control. So. I think a little bit is that here. Some people have extreme things that get beyond their control. And I think that's what you're addressing as well. And that's where it's tough. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to take a deep breath in, breathe out a little bit longer. And uh, we're here every Thursday night. If you want to check this out on the replay, make the grade dot education. I'll throw it in there. Thursday night live is as always sponsored by the success community which is make the grade doc community. Where's the banner for that right here? I can't find it. So I'm, I'm going to, whatever, just leave whatever's up there, there. Um, yeah. One last time, Carly, thank you so much. I hope you will continue to contribute into the community and, and be a, a voice of uh, reason and tremendous advice there. So I'm going to cut this off here. Let's get the uh, theme music going again. How about a big hand for Carly? <laughs> yeah, she got a double, uh, double applause. Later. Taking care of the twins. That was big too. I didn't forget it on that one. Here we go. So, uh, Education Live Thursday. Steve Green, my special guest, Carly Myers. We will see you next time. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.